Um, so, uh, first of all, thank you, uh, team and Erica specifically for having me over. Over. Thank you. Um, to present, I'm actually really excited because I don't get a chance to talk about the business side of the business a lot. People are more curious about ice cream related stuff. Um, so this is a nice opportunity, so please ask any questions, happy to answer. Um, I'm not going to get to all the details I want to share during the presentation, so whatever you have questions, again, please ask. Um, so my name is Desco, I'm the owner of Gospel Ice Cream. I started the business um, a year ago, and um, Gospel Ice Cream is uh, made from scratch, all natural, small batch ice cream company here in Asheville. Um, the fact that I make the ice cream from scratch is very unique, and again, that's one of the things, if someone can ask about that later, that would be great, but I don't want to spend time on it now. Um, so, let me tell you just where it's all coming from, um, where it all started. So, I grew up in Israel and Tel Aviv, and ice cream was, um, ice cream shops or gelato places were kind of like the um, um, torch bearers of the foodie scene, in a way, in Israel, when it uh, kind of started booming, and I was very much into it as a teenager. My parents got me an ice cream maker, and I started making ice cream as a teenager in their house. Um, and then when I left their home, um, I left that ice cream machine behind. But I stayed still in the food world, I explored it, I worked for Stage, and I worked for a year in a very famous Italian restaurant in Tel Aviv that still exists. Um, and at the end of that year, I moved to the U.S., to New York, um, where my professional path kind of took a different turn. But then in 2018, for my birthday, I got an ice cream maker um, as a gift and started making ice cream again. So um, I was always curious about the more unusual flavors, stuff you can't really find in scoop shops generally. Um, so I would make these and then bring them to friends' birthday parties and um, dinner parties and it was always received really well. Um, and I just started making more and more. And in the summer of 2019, um, I went on a beach vacation with friends, a uh, beach vacation with friends, and uh, brought the ice cream machine with me. There was one ice cream shop on that island where we were vacationing, and it was known to have um, kind of a hostile owner, and the ice cream itself wasn't really good. They just brought in tubs of Hershey's ice cream. So as we're sitting after dinner and eating, pretty good ice cream that I made. Um, I was thinking to myself, why isn't there a good ice cream place here? Like, it would be bought, like, you're on an island. Of course people would want ice cream. Um, so that's where the the business idea kind of bugged. Um, and I tried to figure it out, actually over two summers, I talked to a lot of people and tried to figure out, but starting a product-based business, a food business, a frozen food business, a frozen food business on an island uh, was just, there were too many layers that I just was kind of overwhelmed and um, decided not to go for it, even though I kept exploring it. And then the pandemic happened, and everyone has their pandemic story. Uh, mine was that um, at some point during the pandemic, my partner and I decided we want to leave New York um, and move somewhere closer to nature, uh, a little bit warmer, still some community, access to good food, and um, we looked pretty much all over and landed in Asheville. And that's when I started thinking, okay, I can start something completely new here. Um, let me explore different options. And that's when I found Mountain BizWorks um, and signed up to the Business Foundation program, kind of with the thought of let's run this ice cream business idea through uh, through this program and see what happens. Shout out to Melody, that was my instructor, teacher, mentor um, for that course. And um, I love that you're here. Um, so I ran the idea through the, that course, um, and at the end of it, the response was so positive that I was like, okay, let's keep going, let's see where we get with this. So that was fall 2021, and then March 2022, I was pretty much all set up and decided, okay, let's do um, some tasting events and see what the response and start creating some buzz. A note about that, um, in the year before I moved here, I did a lot of marketing trainings uh, and courses. I did a long course with Seth Godin. I did copywriting, um, digital marketing, a lot of different courses. And this was also an opportunity, once I realized I was starting with the business, to check, kind of implement everything I learned about marketing um, and run that, run that ice cream business through that lens also. So I knew that I wanted a catchy name 
talk about the live gospel also. Um, and I knew that I wanted, I, I wanted, I knew that I'm gonna make a very small, limited amount of ice cream, and I wanted to play it in my favor, actually. So I decided to go and an annual of scarcity and create demand in the market. Um, so the way that my business model works, I don't have a physical location, so I make um, the ice cream and put out a specific number uh, of pints available for pre-orders that people can just snag and then pick up at the farmer's market and then they're guaranteed a pint. And then I bring very little extra amount, just because I can't make so much more. Um, so whenever I have extra, I bring in half pints to the farmer's markets for people that just kind of happen across or just want to try it first and build some trust with them, um, they can get at the farmer's market. But basically that, that was my kind of thinking about why work in this model of pre-orders um, and pick up. Uh, this next slide. So, um, ABL Today, uh, Laura Hackett, one of the editors, showed up to my last tasting event asked some questions, took some photos, and basically ended with, well, let us know if you ever want like a feature or something. It's like, okay, I'm about to launch, and I'm not sure yet how it's gonna work. I'll keep that in mind. Uh, later that week, she uh, posted this, or published this on their daily newsletter, uh, which was a huge surprise for me. And in two days, I got a thousand new followers uh, on Instagram from less than 300 to over 1,200. Um, and that really, I had to quickly adapt and kind of rethink my launch strategy. Um, and because of that, really, I've been selling it out since day one. I reached my uh, production capacity since day one uh, of launching, which is incredible, but it was also challenging because I felt kind of constantly pressure to grow. And from day one, um, people have been asking me, when are you opening a scoop shop? Uh, and I kind of avoided that question because honestly, I never wanted to open a scoop shop. I don't want to stand in a scoop shop and scoop ice cream all day. That's just not what I'm passionate about. Um, so I kind of had to think about that for a while and I allowed myself to go through. I wanted, I told myself, let's go through a full season, see what happens, what's the response, how am I feeling about it, just take things at a slow pace. Um, the end of 2022, uh, where are we? Oh, we can probably move forward, sweet. So um, here's an example of flavors that I made. So again, I said I'm not making the traditional scoop chop flavors. Um, so Vietnamese size coffee, rosemary, candy, lemon, um, this stuff. So I do play sometimes with like the more sweet tooth flavors, but like you might spin up them with biscuit, stretchatella, salted caramel, amaretto, honey, um, and amaretto cookies. So just I don't know, at first I called it adult flavors, but then people kept asking if there's alcohol in everything. <laughs> um, and there's alcohol in some, like in Amaretto. Um, but it's just, the way I learned to describe it is flavors that your kids won't fight you over. <laughs> um, which is probably a good thing. Um, okay, next. Um, so, another thing I did throughout the year that really helped with kind of exposure and spreading the gospel, spreading the word, um, was collaborating. I did a lot of collaborations with uh, local um, businesses from small to big, um, and that was great. And it was really helped to form relationships here, um, which is someone completely new. My partner, for instance, is working from home and just doesn't have that. And I built all these wonderful relationships. So, just a side note on like the personal aspect um, of running the business. Um, Keep going. Oh, okay. That's the thing. Okay, so end of 2022, I finally had a minute to breathe, do my numbers. I did my PL P &L statement and saw that I finished the year with profit, which I was very excited about first year with all the startup expenses. But the numbers, because of the capacity that I make it and that I make it only every other week, the numbers were, are not sustainable. It's not big enough. So, or high enough. Sustainable. Um, so I had to make a decision what am I doing next? Am I expanding or am I just kind of shutting it down and going to the next thing? Um, I knew I don't want to do a scoop shop, so I started thinking, okay, if I'm expanding, what is that going to look like? So there's a few different things kind of on the horizon. 
Um, the first one I'm about to change my packaging, um, which I'm very excited about because I never wanted the price. I wanted to differentiate myself and present it as a, a product that's a little bit more high-end, a little bit more upscale. Um, so I'm in the process, hopefully within a couple of months, it will get shipped, produced and shipped. I'm gonna have um, containers that are more like this, which I think I'm very excited about. Um, and then the other thing is that, again, I'm thinking, okay, next step for expanding would be a uh, physical location. And what is that gonna look like? So. The concept that I ended up after a few months of kind of brainstorming and thinking about it is called Temple. Um, and that's pretty much a house for the gospel. Um, and this, more than thinking about it, of what is this, what am I offering? What are the products I'm offering? I wanted to create a specific environment, a specific space where people come out to just unwind, indulge, catch a break from everyday life for a minute, recharge, and then move on. But I'm doing it with a gospel twist. So I'm going to serve desserts, um, including ice cream. I'm going to serve amaros, vermouths, dessert wines. Um, and the fun and exciting part for me is that it's gonna be set up in a sound room or a listening bar. So um, we're gonna have a hi-fi vinyl sound system. I've been working with a sound engineer to um, design the space. So you can sit there and have an immersive listening experience. So really, again, just kind of step into a different world for an hour um, and just enjoy yourself and then yeah, um, move on with your day. So that's uh, a concept of tempo. Um, I have an entire team ready to go. We're looking for a space. And uh, because I'm doing everything myself, including including funding it, um, which I don't really have access to generational wealth or deep, other deep pockets, then um, I'm going to be signing on all these huge loans. And before I do that, I decided I want to run a crowdfunding campaign to kind of check the community's response and see that there's community desire to bring a project like this to life. So this is where I'm at today. Um, in the middle of running this crowdfunding campaign, there's a May and it goes till next Friday. Um, I'm going to have an event at Citizen Vinyl tomorrow. Um, it's going to be a little preview of that space, so I'm going to offer these desserts and drinks and some working hard on a curated playlist. Um, so, music, desserts, wine, just again, just give you a taste of what my vision is for that space. So, I would love to see it all be there. Um, and if you donate to the crowdfunding campaign, Get access Thank to you. <laughs> okay. So if you make a pledge before the event for tomorrow, I'm uh, sorry, before, yes, tomorrow. Um, <laughs> if you make a pledge before the event, then you get a VIP ticket, which includes an early reception uh, between 5 and 6 p.m. and a free dessert. Um, but the event goes to, from the general public event, mm -hmm. goes from 6 to 8, and it's free to attend. So please, either way, come bring your friend. Yeah, just enjoy unwinding for a minute in this environment. Um, and what can we as a community do for you? Next slide. Uh, yes, next slide. Oh, that's images, vision, or vision board of the space. So these are other listening bars um, from around the world. Um, so you can kind of get a sense of the vibe that I want to create. So yeah, comfortable, cozy, lovely, and you know. Um, uh, is there another more? Okay, so um, barcode on the left is for my Instagram, and which is where I mostly live these days. And on the right is for the crowdfunding campaign, um, where you can get details. Now, the crowdfunding campaign. One thing that I find important to emphasize to people: it's not a donation. You're not giving me money, and that's it you're getting real rewards. So I set up the rewards to be specifically of value. So you're pretty much investing in the concept, basically saying, I want to show up in a space. I want to see a space like this exist in Nashville, and I want to show up there. So you're getting, you can get vouchers. Like if you give $25, you get a $25 voucher. If you give $50, you get a free ice cream scoop for our entire first year every time you come in and get a dessert. Um, there's uh, VIP tickets to events we're going to hold, like listening parties and film screenings, 
and there's going to be opportunities to hold uh, private events, private parties at the, at the venue also. So please check out the rewards, and if there's anything you like, and if you like this concept, please. I set a lofty goal of 35 grand. Um, I'm at about, I'm close to 10 as of today. Um, and I have every intention to making it to the end because it's set up as all or nothing. So if I don't hit 35 grand, um, I'm not getting any of that money. And I'm going to probably rethink the whole concept. Because again, it's a proof of, I'm doing it to serve as a proof of concept. If there's a desire in the community to have a space like this here, I'm just asking you to join the Temple family and make it a community thing. I think so much. Really love the, the listening room experience. We have a, a, a good many of those, but not necessarily with ice cream, so that's that's really cool. Maybe some sound bath stuff could happen from a live perspective. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of curious about how you're sourcing some of your materials. Have you partnered with local farmers to maybe bring like incorporate plant medicines? Like I view as Asheville as a really healing space. And I think with the sound experience that you're trying to create, it'd be interesting to partner with with some you know holistic practitioners to determine maybe that's an area that you can explore sometime later on. And but my question is like, how are you sourcing some your materials are you leveraging local local farmers absolutely so um and this will kind of find you the name the name i chose the gospel other than like it being interesting and catchy and kind of confusing most of the time um <laughs> it is it does carry a meaning um gospel means the literal meaning is the good word and i'm basically the mission is to spread the good word of good food so for me good food means very simple ingredients no, I don't add any weird things like stabilizers, um, colors, all that. Um, and um, I source as many of the ingredients as I can. I want them to be local, organic, uh, fair trade. So whatever I can have, get access to, um, that's what I'll get. So obviously some flavors, passion fruit, I can't get here. Oh, yeah, there again, from the leaves, I did get, it's a local variety of passion fruit. Um, but they're all pineapple, I can't get here. Um, so these kind of stuff I'll source from other places, but whatever I can source locally, I'll do that. I don't use out of season fruit. Um, so right now strawberries mm. are in season and that's incredible. I make sorbet, so I make some vegan options also. Um, so the dairy is uh, local dairy sourced through Farm to Home, um, which specializes in that. Uh, so yeah, I put a lot of attention on where the ingredients are coming from and what are the ingredients. So it's high quality ingredients um, and that's been always kind of a, a cornerstone of the company. Um, with regards to sound baths, healing, plant medicine, I love all these things. Right now they don't, um, that's not the focus of um, kind of, I can't spread myself Two things for two reasons. One, personally, I do everything from the dishwashing to the Instagram posting and cooking the ice cream. Um, so this, I need to stay focused on certain things. And the other thing is, I don't want to confuse like my market, my audience, with who I'm serving and who am I doing this for. Not to say that I don't want to serve other people, um, I, but like you said, it might just be a, a second tier. I actually didn't think of the idea of some that um, in the space, and that could be really cool. Um, the space is not set up necessarily for live events, it's more recorded music, um, but everything is possible and we're going to have an amazing acoustic in the space, so that could yeah, be used for that. Thank you. Um, yep. Hey, um, well, I think you really wanted something. I, I liked your comment too about the plant medicine, maybe like a series somewhere out in the future or something. Okay, I'll, I do have something to say about that, but yeah. Because you, you have so many things that you're doing here. Um, I guess my comment is, you know, it seems like a big leap you're, you're, you're looking to make here with setting up such a, you know, involved space with, you know, so much investment needed. Um, that being said, it seems also like collaboration in the community you know, that's, I think, going to be your bread and butter 
you know, working and trying to partner with the culinary icons here in the community, you know, to, to you know, look to partner as much as possible, you know, you know in the community. Um, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, do you have a point? I mean, is it all or nothing for you? Because it seems like, I mean, you're doing so many really amazing things with focus on local, having, you know, a unique ice cream, which we really don't have in this thing here. Um, but it also seems like it is a big jump that you're looking to take. And maybe without, you know, essential partnerships to, to go there. Um, so I'm a little concerned about that. Um, but overall, I think what you're doing is awesome. And you know, I can't wait to taste some more. Thank you. So um, multiple aspects of what you uh, asked, commented, um, I'd like to speak about. One, um, and two are tied together. Again, the plant medicine and uh, the idea of community. So these are two things that um, I'll touch. First of all, um, there's going to be a, a projector and screen in that space, and we're going to do film screenings of um, music forward films, let's say uh, Yellow Submarine, that's one that everyone kind of knows. <laughs> um, but seriously, when you sit and watch and kind of sit in this immersive you know, sound experience environment, then that's a very kind of phenomenal experience. And I already talked, for instance, with Garden Party. Everyone knows them, shout out to them because they're incredible. A uh, head shop, gift shop, wonderful small business on Haywood Road. Um, for people to go there, get a uh, 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 CBD uh, gummy, and then come to the space and sit in the park <laughs> and enjoy it. Um, the whole space, I will say, um, and I appreciate you asking about community and making different uh, connections, relationships. So. Um, there are things I'm planning to do, guest chef dinners there and tasting menus, um, but that's with regards to other people around me um, from like the business side. But I want it to be a space for the community at large. So I don't do it, if I wanted to you know, make tons of money, I would run my ice cream business into a national model and start wholesaling. Um, that's not what I'm looking for. I want to create a family. I want to create a community. And that's, everything is set up with that in mind. Another aspect that I haven't um, shared yet is that, or you know, publicly, is that um, there's going to be membership options. Um, I want the business to be catering mostly for locals. I assume slash imagine it will garner some, um, some, it's gonna be a destination also for tourists, but it's mostly gonna be for locals and I want to make sure that locals have it's a tiny space, 18 to 25 seats. Um, I want to make sure that I'm building a community that's um, supporting the space. So there's going to be a membership program uh, where members that uh, pay monthly, a monthly uh, fee actually get that money in return. And so you pay a $100 uh, monthly membership and you get a $100 credit to come in. But you get also a lot of other benefits like first access to events, um, the ability to reserve seats, which other people want. Just, I have a lot of, there's a lot of layer to that. But the idea is to create, really create a community of people. And again, the crowdfunding campaign is the first kind of step in that direction to bring people in uh, to be part of this project. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so talking about collaboration, mm -hmm. um, opening for your own space, that's a lot of other things that you have to think about with you know, employees and all that kind of stuff. So what about tying into people a space that's not being used at night? For example, Citizens Vinyl. Maybe tying into that and saying, okay, at night it turns into the temple or right. it brings in that kind of stuff certain times during the week. So that you're not putting out that huge expense of overhead for a space on your own with employees and all that kind of stuff. So just as an idea. Absolutely. Um, so first of all, um, employees will need to be there at night. So that, yeah. that specific aspect is but I hear you on all the other overhead of running the business. I developed this plan with a coach from SCORE, a coach from Mountain Biz Works, um, uh, two restaurant, no, sorry, three restaurant owners, um, a, a drink by, I did the legwork, um, and I'm very well versed in what's going, what's going to be required to run the space, which I, I know that, that that's not what you were 
implying. Um, but I did want to bring that in. I'm not just jumping into this project uh, kind of, oh, that sounds like a cool idea, let's do that. Um, so, and I wouldn't ask people for money if I didn't feel like it's something that's possible. I did, space is an issue in Asheville. So if we're talking about what I'm asking, how you can help, if you know of spaces, 12 to 5, 1,500 square feet wow. that can house a commercial kitchen, uh, please let me know. Um, but I did explore the idea of partnering with other uh, businesses, gallery, doing like a speakeasy, something like that. That is something that I'm considering as an option. Uh, there's one big space in, uh, in Asheville that I'm in conversation with about that. Um, so that's definitely an option. I'm pretty much early in my planning that I can stay very nimble and flexible with what the space is actually going to look like. Um, and I'm trying to keep that in mind. So that's definitely one element of that. Does that answer? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, wait. Sorry. Um, Go over the mic. I don't have a question, but I just want to congratulate you for being at this spot. Um, and just this is like a real testament of this Asheville entrepreneurial community and being able to witness somebody's vision into fruition and it actually becoming something because you know he said it was in my foundations class and it was just a plan that we were talking about and then one day I randomly went to the farmers market and he was there with ice cream and I got to try and sample this really small batch of like a vanilla smoke ice cream which had like real smoke and it. it was amazing it was incredible and um, and seeing you here today seeing how the vision has evolved, listening to you speak about it, and also you just stating having um, that agility with the plan, which is really important. Um, and also just in Asheville, when you come to One Million Cups and you come to these events, you see people present, and then you get to watch how their businesses grow and evolve in the community with the help, with the support of everyone else, being a resource, coming out to support, and again, it's like just here's one to watch, and those of you that have been coming to One Million Cups and these events for years can attest to seeing somebody present at One Million Cups, and years later, you know, where their business is, um, most of the businesses here in Hatch, all presented at One Million Cups as like a little nothing at the very beginning years ago, and like look where they are, so. I want to congratulate you. Um, so capacity be? Will you be more focused on ice cream or the temple experience concept? Uh, thank you. So um, there's definitely going to be a transition because I made a decision that I don't want to be making ice cream day in and day out. Um, I want to be in community. I want to create a space. I always say that the house I set up here um, is really nice. I love being there. And in a way, making the ice every other week was kind of allowed me to spend more time at the house. So then when I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna, oh, I need to expand, I need to grow, that means I'm gonna have to like go somewhere every day and do like some work. Um, so what space would I want to be in every day? And that's how I started thinking of it. I want it to be a beautiful space, a comfortable space. I want to, to feel like you're walking into someone's really amazing living room with a really amazing sound system that I honestly can't afford to buy. So, um, but now I'm doing it for myself, but for everyone else to come in, it's a public space. So back to your question of where is it going in five years, there's going to be a retail section. I'm going to, be keep, I'm going to keep making ice cream. There's going to be ice cream options on the menu, and there's going to be a freezer where you can pick up, still pick up gospel ice creams to go. 
Um, my, my production scale will increase. I'm going to purchase a higher scale machine, which are going to be so expensive. Um, and that's why I haven't pulled the plug on it, the trigger on it yet. Um, but there, I will have a commercial kitchen of my own. Right now, I'm working on like commissary kitchens. Um, so I'll be able to install a machine like that there. Um, so the production will increase. The focus will be on Temple, on the space, um, and what I'll be offering there, which will be more than just the ice cream. Uh, yeah. Hey, Tom and the Um Curious about your, like, I guess just flavors. Are there certain flavors that bring you back that you're trying to import from, or where do you get your sort of flavor combination inspiration? Uh, so, uh, I, from all over, but really there's two types of flavors uh, or flavor inspirations. One is personal memories. I find uh, food and music, which is now kind of leaning into that more, uh, to be so associative with specific memories uh, for myself and kind of take me back to specific places, times, people. So that's one thing. My first flavor that I was really excited about was panna cotta, which was kind of the ice cream version of the panna cotta we used to make at the restaurant where I worked, which had like the lemon zest and vanilla and coffee beans kind of cooked in it. Um, and that's one of my repeat flavors. I make different flavors each time. I make more than 120 flavors um, so far. Um, and a few have made it back. Kind of is one of them, just because of my personal relationship to it. Um, and you know, I guess people like it, so they buy it. Um, the other inspiration is I look at what other people are doing, um, and I look, I follow tons of food accounts on Instagram. Um, mostly, that's kind of where I see it on a daily basis, and I get a lot of inspiration from that. Either I'll see a flavor combination that I'm really excited to find myself. Um, or make my own take on it. It's like, oh, that would be, I didn't think of using tarragon in ice cream. What, what would I use it with? Um, yeah, so these are the main two inspiration things. Yeah. Hi, uh, big fan of ice cream. Thank you. Thank you. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll just make two points. One is um, with the crowdfunding, and this is my opinion. I wouldn't place too much stock in the crowdfunding. One, I, I think it's kind of burnt itself out. And two, as an indicator of uh, potential market success, I don't know that it's a very good one. Um, especially a food entrepreneur, most of the ones that I know do because they have a passion for the food and they just go out and do it. And then hope somebody comes in the door, which is usually successful in cases like yours. Um, the second point is, is uh, uh, Matt McCann of the local radio show called Buzz Radio. It's internet only. I don't know their numbers, but he also owns a biz radio, business radio channel that's Internet only, they ever reach 70,000 people a month. Buzz Radio is just all local music, regional. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about this listening room and being in a bit of an audio file, I sort of picture these local artists come in, play their albums, and just sort of mingle with the crowd. So they have a space where they can present their music to people. So Matt McCann is probably the guy that you might want to talk to once you're getting closer to open. Thank you. Uh, right. Right. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. So, I can't wait to try your ice cream. Thanks. Yeah. Sounds yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Uh, both businesses' concepts sound great. They're very, very different as businesses. Mm -hmm. and, and so you're making the leap from serving sort of the foodies, the indulgence piece, on a very individual level to creating entertainment, hospitality experience. Um, so, I guess the first question really is, are you prepared to change and go to such a different business where the ice cream becomes almost secondary. And then the other question is, you know, you're, you're talking about investing a significant amount of creating this listening room, and it sounds like a great vision, um, but should you be trying out the market first? In other words, could you, collaboration came up several times, could you collaborate with other people and do special events that a whole series of which would be a great way to test the concept um, and lower your risk and help sort of focus what you ultimately do. Absolutely, um, and I, you know, to agree, wish I heard and spoke to so many people um, and heard your comments uh, sooner because these are all valid points. Um, points. Um, first of all, am I ready to make the shift 
um, in what I'm doing. Yes, that's why I'm doing it, because I don't, again, <laughs> don't want to be too harsh. I don't want to make ice cream all day. I want to do something different. So am I ready for it? Personally, yes. Do I have the skills to do it? I think I have a lot to learn. Um, I do have a plan of how to get there. Um, and um, so after this crowdfunding campaign ends, we're gonna go into, hopefully there will be a space, There's there are a few conversations. Um, and that process, the space, building the space, will take realistically four to six months, possibly more. Um, and what I'm planning to use that time for is to kind of level up my skills on where I know I need to do that. Um, I do have an amazing team that I gather around me um, that are very passionate about, that see the vision, are passionate about it, are supporting me, um, and that includes people that are in the industry that won't have a direct contact to the business itself, but they want to see me succeed and see the space come to life, so they are willing to um, kind of mentor me in that sense uh, on these areas that I still need going to need to work on. Um, collaborations. Um, I love that idea. Uh, a, someone mentioned that there are other sunrooms in Nashville. There aren't. Um, there are different bars, different levels of sound systems. There's nothing that's going to be like this. Um, there's nothing, there's no space you can come in and have this level of listening experience on a public scale. Some people may have it at their homes. Um, and what I want to do is bring this concept to kind of make it more accessible. Um, I remember the first time that I sat in a room that was designed for this listening experience. There was a someone's living room, there was a sticker on the wall behind the couch, and it's like, sit there, and I sat there, and there were two speakers with marking on for exactly which direction they need to face, and he played Express Yourself by Madonna, which was not his style. He's like, just listen. And you could hear each instrument in separately in space, and that blew my mind. Um, and I don't know if we can reach that level in the space, but we could reach a level that you can have a conversation with the person next to you and not have to shout, which is what happens in most spaces, <coughs> most kind of bars or other places that might be doing that volume. Um, so it's hard to collaborate in that sense and create that experience without building a space for that. Uh, so that's one challenge. The other is I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to, like that's a personal thing. And I might be at fault here um, and it might live on the other side. I don't think it will. The response I've been getting so far has been incredible. People are super excited about it. I want to create a space that's going to be an alternative to going to a brewery that's going to be more intimate and on the other hand not something that's going to be so formal like a restaurant. So, and I think that kind of space in the evening, a coffee shop is great, there's wonderful coffee shops, uh, Rowan and Rowan kind of give that vibe, but they're closed in the evening, so um, I want to create that space that's kind of more intimate, more sexy, romantic, uh, but still casual and not formal that you feel like you need to go there and spend, you know, a whole night and a paycheck. Yes, thank you. Hey, thanks for, thanks for being here. Um, first off, I don't know what's the praise on about the collaboration stuff. Like, I think you have a vision, I love it. Um, I think that this is becoming a town of, you know, retired, wealthy individuals who are looking for something to do that's an alternative to just going out to a brewery, so I think you're spot on. What I'm curious about, when you, when you think of ice cream shop, um, at least in my experience, which you have a couple kids, or it's, you know, it's a lot, there's a lot of ice cream shops. It's generally, you're going there, they say you're neighborhood. Right, I'm not crossing from North Nashville to South Nashville. I'm not going to West Nashville. I'm you know, going to hit the couple of that are you know, short drive. And I'm curious if you want it, you think this becomes a destination, and I think that's maybe part of what your your, your vision is, which is, is, is interesting. But is there a, a, a specific area in town that would be ideal for the physical location um, that you have? And I just want to you know, uh, make a couple comments. Um, you know, hopefully in five years you're not making the ice cream. There are ice cream makers who are making and you're, you're designing, you're coming up with flavors, you're coming up, you know, and I, I think um, 
you know, I, I, I can hear them. I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to be just making nice and the, the idea, right, of, of, of doing this is that you don't, you, you hopefully get the part where you're just the creator. You can really, that's, that, I can see that part of, of the spark in you. Um, and then who knows, at that point anything is possible. Maybe there's more than one location. Maybe you're doing out posts in these collaborative environments that everybody wants from you. Maybe you are the new home. So, um, but, I, but I think if you get this right, um, that that will be a really freeing experience. Not that it's not going to be a ton of hard work and stress along the way. Um, but I'm curious about uh, location, what you think. Sure. So obviously that's a very big um, deciding factor or um, aspect. Um, so the business is going to operate right now. The vision is for the business to operate from 4 to 10 p.m. So post work, post dinner crowd. I'm not expecting people to go there and you know spend. You know, it's not dinner. Um, you go there after. I want to place that where you you sit for dinner and you had an amazing meal wherever it was, but you're kind of full and you're not even. Let's go to Temple for dessert. Let's walk it off for a second and go get a little bite and dessert in a little bit more casual environment. So that's kind of my fantasy of how people think of it. Um, in that sense, I need to be around these restaurants. I need to be around spaces that already attract people. Um, so currently, what I identified it as is West Asheville and River Arts District, and possibly specific, very specific location dependent in uh, downtown and South Slope. Um, but my focus is on West Asheville and River Arts District. And, and just about, I, I'm assuming this is not, the market is not, I'm dragging my kids for ice cream. Nope. No. Um, no, I'm, and I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't have anything no. against uh, ice cream scoop shops that serve families and kids. I think they do incredible work. I, that's not what I want to do. Um, so, yeah, that's. But yeah, it's not a place for you to bring your kids to and do a, a birthday party. Um, it's not a place for a bachelorette party. We're probably going to have a, a limit, a party limit of four people, um, because we want to keep it intimate and we, I want to keep it intimate and kind of on the more chill side, even if the music might be banging certain nights of the week. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for being here. You bet. Um, so the sexiest thing I have heard is uh, your foray into uh, memberships. Because driving the demand in the city, in my opinion, there's a lot of places that could make that happen. And going into it with a strong intention, so you've got memberships that people can, uh, as you drive your events, you'll know which ones are working. And those, depending on what level, you know, they move levels, uh, if the hazard is not Right now, my brain is all about this crowdfunding campaign, but the membership program is really going to be um, the next big, you know, audience forward-facing element uh, that I'm gonna. It's already planned out. I just don't want to overwhelm people with information, um, so I'll get to that, like sharing more about that. But it is very well thought out. I'm working with a software company from the Bay Area called the Third Place. That that's their specialty, creating community small businesses, my crowdfunding platform is, or crowdfunding campaign is based on their, is using their platform because all the information goes into their CRM system, um, that then the membership program will be on that platform as well. So I basically am already setting myself up to have <coughs> that gift experience uh, built in from <coughs> right now. Uh, Yes. I think we have time for one more question. Okay, I, I don't know, apologies if you already explained what is the name, oh, the name yeah. of gospel. And I just, I also, uh, have you ever seen a silent disco? Do you know yeah. Because I, 
was, you already addressed the idea of being able to go in and actually converse mm -hmm. and then have this immersive sound experience. So I wasn't sure how those would coexist. Mm -hmm. But in some cases, maybe one night a week, there's this headset experience where each person can choose the type of music they want to hear, and they really hear that in a very clear way. And then the third thing was about refillables. I saw that you no. have <laughs> the packaging, oh, yeah. package reduction. I don't know if that was part of the metal uh, container concept. <clears throat> it looked like those were metal to me. Just the lid is tin. Oh, OK. So are those? They're, are they're the same material. They're like paper. Color, ice cream. They're paper-based. Oh, they're packaging. paper. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering if you ever thought maybe you could do like a crowd or a I I'll talk about that. Okay, so first name, gospel. Um, I kind of touched on that. I'll go over that very quickly. Was looking for a name. Um, was looking for like something interesting, unique that people will kind of stop at their tracks and wait, be like, wait, what? Um, and wasn't sure what it's gonna be. Gospel showed up somewhere in my sphere um, somehow. Um, and I was like, wait, what's the meaning of gospel? And Googled it, the good word. And I'm like, perfect, the good word, starting the good word with good food. So that's gospel. Um, and then Temple, when I was looking for a name for like the physical space, I had a bunch of different ideas. My first one that I woke up in the middle of the night one night and popped in was Grace. Um, I wanted to stay close to like that, kind of play tongue in cheek a little bit with the whole religious theme. Um, <coughs> So Grace, because Grace Jones is kind of my <laughs> <laughs> goddess. Um, but then, yeah, just kept sitting with it for a while and landed on a uh, temple, which I think is great because it's a community space, it's a physical space, it's a place where you come in to have kind of an outer world experience. Um, so I love to think about that. Uh, and then second question was about, I don't remember what the container is. Oh, the head. Okay, so, Open to the idea. Again, right now, I mean, totally open to the idea. It's like, I didn't think of it, and yeah, let's give that a shot and see what happens with that uh, type of event. Um, the immersive, when I say immersive sound experience, first of all, you're going to come in, and it's not you're not going to go in and going to have to like be quiet. Like, it's fun. It's a space for you to hang out with friends and the community. Um, so there are going to be specific events like a list, an album listening event where we'll play an album start to finish and that's it's a more kind of like, okay, no talking. Um, but generally it just means that the sound will be designed, the audio system will be designed in a way that you will be able to hear music in really high quality while still having a conversation over a drink and a sleep bite. Um, last question, packaging. Um, originally I was thinking about, when I started, I was thinking about doing glass jars and refills. Um, that didn't work out at the early stages. Um, the whole world of packaging is, and the whole sustainability, like compost, compostable packaging is problematic. Um, there's not a lot of facilities, everything that says compostable, compostable, um, means it's compostable in a commercial facility. There aren't commercial facilities around us, so wherever you see that, I don't know where it ends up, unless they have a special service picking up and taking it to the closest one that's in, um, not Knoxville, um, Johnson, Johnson, Johnson City. City. Johnson City, thank you, sorry, I'm still here. Um, that's the closest one. So unless someone picking it up and taking it specifically there, it's not being uh, composted. Uh, recycling is very similar. So I'm, I did my research on trying to find the, the most um, reasonable packaging option uh, in that sense, from that perspective. Um, it's going to be paper and tin, which are both recyclable, um, if they're being recycled properly. But I can't control that. Um, okay, you said this was the last question. Uh, so yeah, I just I never answered what really what does the community you can do so. Uh, yes, do it. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, so basically, um, multiple small things um, or options. One, if you have the ability and you like the idea, please make a pledge. Check out the rewards. Make a pledge. Um, if you can't, I totally get it. Uh, 
please spread the word. That's the next thing that's going to be very impactful. Um, spread the gospel. We're, uh, the campaign goes till uh, next Friday, where I have to hit that mark. So please share with friends, tag specific people that you think would be into it, send them an email. Seriously, that would be as important as actually making a pledge as valuable. Um, and please come out tomorrow, Sips and Vinyl. I'd love to see you all be there. Um, Six to eight p.m. general admission, uh, free. Um, but if you make a pledge before tomorrow, then uh, you'll get the VIP ticket, um, and then there's an early reception, five to six p.m., and a free dessert. All right. Thank you.